Brock now moves to second place. There's Robbie Francovic leading them down towards the dock area. Brock about 100 metres behind, followed by Andy Rouse. And the next one is Dick Johnson and then Alan Grice making a challenge as well. Going into the left-hander that will bring them onto the wharf area here in Wellington. And Francovic setting up a good lead already. Turbo up nicely and he's running away from Peter Brock at this stage. There were a number of early casualties in the enduro. Graham Bowcat attempted to knock down a bridge and failed. Andy Rouse had even less success after clawing the concrete, while unscheduled pit stops for John Harvey and Dick Johnson cost them dearly. All the time, though, His Royal Highness of Moomba was closing on the leading subject. To the Custom House key again, and Robbie Francovic has Peter Brock even closer. They're coming up on John Harvey, who's made his pit stop. See if Brock can get the slingshot as they come along the main street here in Wellington. And Brock pulling to the outside as he races Francovic down to the left-hander. And he'll take Francovic on the inside. So Peter Brock now goes through to lead the Nissan Mobile 500. Francovic in second place in the Volvo. And a good passing manoeuvre from Brocky. Brocky was revelling in the conditions. Wellington had attracted a number of important folk from the leading European teams. That all flown in for a sticky beak at the Commodore and to gauge its potential in the ETC this year. The sight of Peter Perfect playing traffic warden at the head of the pack was enough to make your egg and burger unpalatable. I saw the smoke coming uh, everywhere inside the car and uh, around the car. It uh, appears as though uh, you're going to be in here for some time. Yes, I think it takes uh, at least five minutes to change it. Brock came in for his first pit stop, giving Alan Moffat his first co-driver's role with the mobile team. The crew sent Alan on his way with a new set of slicks, just as the rain arrived on cue. Moffat aquaplaned his way around the track, but came in a second time for a set of intermediates. By this time, the Commodore's lead had vanished. Ray Smith took over for a spell in the ACB Commodore, until he in turn was gathered in by Tony Longhurst in the BMW 635. Longhurst's form in the wet was truly outstanding. He established a big lead until Moffat came in to hand over to Peter Perfect. Study and concentration. Oh, brilliant stop from the dealer team. A real good job by Tony Di Gennaro, the man that just went through shot. And they got the car out in around about 20 seconds. And here is Brock, catching some ground up. So they're probably back now, still with two laps down. So he's made up the ground on the pit stop as they go beneath Graham Crosby. And Longhurst will probably try and stick to his tunnel, although I think Longhurst might be facing a tyre problem as well very shortly because the track is completely dry along the, uh, the centre of town. The best fight back of the day came from the pairing of Dick Johnson and Neville Crichton in the JPS Mustang. The Queenslander was now on slicks and storming back after the leaders. That early pit stop was to cost him the race. Brock continued to whittle back Longhurst's lead lap after lap, but the affable Queenslander made a hasty exit from the field when his BMW had a front suspension failure. You know, that's motor racing. You know, it can happen one lap from the finish. It's a shame it happened. I had the race under control. I had 10 laps to go, and I was running at a very comfortable, safe speed. As I was going down the back straight there, the uh, wheel just let go, and the part of the suspension broke off. I kept on going straight ahead in the tyre barrier. Coming out of the last corner, across the strike, and Peter Brock and Alan Moffat take the Wellington 500 and take it well. The second leg of the Nissan Mobile Series in New Zealand was held a week later at the Pukekohe circuit near Auckland, where Alan Grice stole pole position in the Commodore. Brock was an early casualty with engine problems, while the Walkingshaw Rovers both ploughed off the circuit in the same corner and had lengthy pit stops to repair crumple coachwork. The number seven mobile Commodore of John Harvey and Neil Lowe became stronger as the race progressed, and a confident Harvey left his Kiwi co-driver in the car for the final sprint to the chequered flag. We've got about uh, 26 seconds on him after that last pit stop, and Neil will now run to the finish. He can afford to just cruise a little bit and save himself. Uh, I think we can make it to the finish, but uh, you never know. I've been in this position at Bathurst many times and lost out in the last few laps, but it's looking good at the moment. I think we can make it. Low cruise to the line to give the team its second major success in 1986. Brock and Moffat start their European campaign at Monza, Italy in three weeks. 
The ETC Championship big guns are ready and waiting. And make no mistake, we have two Commodore locals only too happy to accommodate them. Share your moment, please.